I was living in this Victorian when Ruby began visiting me. The house was built in 1893, two years before Ruby was born. The house, like Ruby, survived many earthquakes by swaying as the earth shook beneath them. I became obsessed with my great aunt's life, and whenever I heard a creak or a groan in the building, I would hold my breath, hoping Ruby would visit. As it turns out, I didn't have to wait long. I walked down to Union Street and opened the door of a vintage clothing store. A string of bells announced my entrance, but I didn't see anyone in the shop. It appeared empty, except for a radio playing. Gradually, the musty smells of old shoes and dresses disappeared, and a scent of jasmine filled the air. I will always love that song, Hesitating Blues. I don't think any performer forgets when they stop a show. Ruby reflected as she lounged on a velvet settee. I smiled, knowing Ruby had returned from the afterlife. Oh, the music was so alive that night, and the audience was loving it. You see, music traveled through musicians back in my day. People would be introduced to songs through live performances. And, well, the musical director would stumble upon songs as the audition musicians. So that night we performed a novel show called Maids in America, and the audience heard Hesitation Blues for the first time. If I was a whiskey and you were a duck, would dive to the bottom and never come up. I loved a song that elicits a reaction, a turn of phrase, or a hint of sex. I enjoyed getting a reaction. At the time of the Great War, Ruby's syncopated singing and vampish style were national topics. Show programs had her singing numbers like Lover's Blues, Big Boy, and Bill. Ruby was one of many performers with the Will King Follies. Other names included Arthur Belasco and Reese Gardner. But as time went by, her star rose, and she was featured more and more as a soloist. The shows were elaborate musical stage comedies, usually about the same thing, and the cast was cleverly assembled. Dear, did you know? Your grandmother and I teamed up when I was just five years old. We'd perform over in Golden Gate Park on Saturdays. Well, we'd put on dances like the cakewalk. Your poor grandmother would get all dressed up as a boy, and I the girl. Oh, the cakewalk, have you seen it? The cakewalk is a high stepping dance. You walk up and down in a straight line with exaggerated steps. It's a simple dance, but everyone seemed to love it. At the end of the day, though, we'd come home and show our father what we'd earned. And he would smile with pride and say, The best damn cakewalkers on the Pacific Coast can't be beat. It was a strong sense of family and of herself that compelled Ruby to pursue her career. Ruby had more than just little girl charms. She had a lovely voice, a sense of rhythm, a photographic memory, and a quick wit. Although younger than my grandmother, when she saw a dance step, she could repeat it with no problem, teach it to May, and integrate it into their routines. It was her ability to quickly learn dance steps and her determination that gave her the tools that would lead to auditions. The stage would give Ruby her livelihood. It would also take it away. When at 27, a broken rope in the wings of a theater would change the course of her life. Stage people were looked down upon then, but Ruby never doubted what she was made to be, and she loved every minute of the fans' adoration. After she would perform a torch song, people would look at each other, shake their heads, and say, she sang that song as if there was a tear in her voice. Now, 
I must go now, Chickadee. But I will be back. Ruby's appearances were fleeting. Her spirit disappeared as quickly as it came, and I found myself standing in the middle of public places wondering what just happened. Did others see her? Why had she come back to this world? Eventually, I begin to understand. If you want to hear more of my visits with Ruby, stay tuned to the next Ruby vignette.